Hey guys, good morning. Happy Saturday. Happy Saturday, everybody. We are so excited to launch this Paint-a-thon. You are in for a real treat. There are some fantastic gals that have done some amazing projects that you're gonna be able to see and learn how to do so many new things that are so exciting. We've got our, um, our plaster wrap, we've got our glass beads, we've got our embossing gels, we've got our glazing, all kinds of things. It's gonna make it a lot of fun. But what we thought our project would be, would be take you shopping. Yeah, let's go through Haven. Haven House, we are here on 30A in Florida. We look like we're kind of dressed for Florida, don't we? Uh -huh. And we're at Haven House. It is a fantastic program that is for rehab um, addiction. So uh, they're usually just for guys. I didn't ask if it was mm -hmm. for females and males, mm -hmm. but it's great because this is how they raise their money. So when you buy a piece, you're able to help another organization like Haven House to be able to help uh, these guys through addiction. It's like a, a year long or 18 month program and this is how they're able to pay their bills. So it's a great organization to be able to help if you're out on 30A. So we want to go through some of these pieces of furniture. We're going to talk about what we would do to them, um, what products might work good, as well as maybe just kind of ask Jean about repairing, what that might look like. So we always talk about going um, going shopping together, going thrifting. Um, it's a lot of fun. So are you ready? Here we go. All right. So I'm going to turn the camera around. And see the traffic. <laughs> okay. Okay, guys. So we're out. We're actually outside of Haven House, and we're looking at some of the things that they've got out here. So we've got this uh, wicker. This could actually be a changing table, babe, or um, yeah. a hamper. And a hamper. So <laughs> talk to us. How do we paint wicker? Well, first thing you want to do is, of course, clean slate and go over it get all you know that's probably got years of dirt dust grime granny's uh, tobacco stains everything else on there <laughs> and you won't get all that off and with that you can either paint it with the one-step paint you can paint it with miracle paint you could come in with the lacquers the high gloss lacquers and do something really shiny on it so is there anything and, we need when we're talking about painting lacquer how do we get down in the grooves? Is that not going to be best if we spray that? You know, it's a lot faster if you do that with spray using a uh, paint sprayer. And you can use the paint sprayer and use One Step or Miracle Paint and go over that with the sprayer. And it'll be, you can do it in minutes instead of, uh, you know, an hour. And here's the other thing. Look at all these chairs that you see out here. It's like a chair of Rama. Like, you can paint, a lot of people don't realize, when you find upholstery pieces like this, you can paint them with the one step. Now, people are like, okay, Amy and Jean, what's the difference between the Miracle Paint and the one step? The one step does allow you to be able to use on any, pretty much any surface, um, especially like the wicker, even fabric, um, or even, I wanted to look at this uh, rocker. Now, the Miracle paint, on the other hand, it does not have to be sealed. You want to be able to seal um, one step if you want protection because it is a matte finish. Um, so, Jean, talk to us real quickly about this rocker. How would we paint? How would we go about painting this? People freak out over doing spindles. You know, same thing. You just you want a clean slate really well, get all the old junk off of it. And with the spindles, what you want to do is, again, spraying that is much easier than brushing it, but if you don't have the sprayer, you don't want to invest in a sprayer, then just use a smaller brush for the spindles. Don't use the two and a half inch wide brush or inch and a half wide brush to do that. You want to use a smaller, more of an artist brush. What about a spindles. sponge brush? I, you know, even a sponge brush, it would not be as good as using like just a flat, maybe half inch wide, Three quarter inch wide uh, uh, paintbrush. All right, so we want to go through and just kind of continue to show you, um, like even little bar stools like this. When you see something in upholstery and it's like it's not your color, or maybe it's really ugly upholstery, it's good to stay with more of a um, of a cotton. Um, you don't want to get into um, heavy naps like velvets. Um, okay. Herculon. You want to stay away from that because it's going to hold too much paint. All right, so we're going to walk in here. You know, something else that you need to remember, um, like this is a 
vinyl chair. Guys, vinyl is easy peasy to paint with the one step. You do want to make sure you clean it. Now, when you've got areas like this, Jean, let me ask you, when we've got places like this that are bad and cracked on vinyl, should we stay away from that altogether? No. Or? No, you can, you can still, you can paint right on top of that and it goes away for the most part. So as far as thinning the one step to be able to paint on top of vinyl. If you're doing vinyl or leather, you do not have to thin it down as much as you do fabric because the vinyl and the leather is not going to absorb the paint like your fabric does. So you do not, maybe 10% instead of 20 to 25%. All right, so let's go on in here. We always, um, we always kind of hate it when people are watching us go through and they think we're talking to ourselves. But again, if you're popping on, happy Saturday! We are here, Jean and I are launching the Paint-a-thon and all these amazing ladies. We're at Haven House here at 30A um, in Florida. So we're gonna walk in here. We want, to, we want to show you. Let's go down here and look at this table real quick. I wanna show them. little cocktail table we have one kind of like this mm -hmm. so guys look at the um look at the edge of that isn't that a really pretty lip i even like the base of it now this piece is 150 dollars. i don't know how, if they'll let you negotiate on things like this but gene what would you do to this you know you can take the glass and take that off if you want to save it tape it around the edge then put newspaper over it and tape that down and again, you could, you know, this would be a great piece to lacquer. It would be a it great be. lacquer. It'd Fantastic. Nice you know, guys, you also need to watch, you know, you could do the top of this, we could do it in a lacquer finish. Mm -hmm. When we've done our stencil design, you mm -hmm. need to go back on YouTube and check that out. But I love this. That could be a knockout piece. Mm -hmm. And a white lacquer, a black lacquer, a Belgian blue lacquer. Don't you love that? Especially doing a stencil design on the glass. Yeah. That could really could, be, that could just make yeah. it a Yeah, nice so those of you that resell furniture guys it once you it, we're only talking about what two cans of lacquer talk to everybody real quick about lacquer take us through the process real quick you know with our lacquer it's a nitrocellulose lacquer it's a true lacquer it's not a spray paint so the application of that is totally different and you want to watch the videos to make sure you're applying it correctly same thing it's clean slate now on this well you do need to do some sanding the sanding is going to be because the smoother, the smoother you get this uh, surface, the more sheen you'll get from the lacquer, and you're going to sand with old 400 grit sandpaper uh, before and in between coats. And we do want to use a primer on this. Yeah, a primer wouldn't hurt because we got some grainy areas right in here and along there that will fill that grain up to make it smoother. All right, so let's keep shopping. These chairs like this in metal would actually look good in lacquer too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Or paint those and put them outside. All right, so I do want to show y'all this over here. We're at Haven House in 30A. These nightstands would look fantastic painted. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I love those. It's hard to find pairs of things. But a lot of you, when you are looking at old paintings like this or old pictures, <coughs> don't look at the picture. Don't look at the frame. Look at the frame. Look at what we could do in order to be able to paint it and get some detail. So there's a real opportunity to be able to get some great looking frames that you can turn around and maybe do a mirror inside it. Look at these. So all of these could be done with milk paint. They could be done with lacquer. They could, de depending on the style and the, the finish that you want to be able to go on. But please, when you're looking at art and being able to try to find frames, don't look at the picture. Look at what we could do. It And these are such easy, fun projects. And you're going to find tons of them when you go in places like this. You know, this would be a nice one to do as an old... Uh, gold leaf or silver leaf finish or even milk paint finish mm -hmm. would look fantastic mm -hmm. on that because of the the carving okay so let's walk back here we're in the clothes there, there's always going to be vintage clothes we want to go back here in the furniture section 
too, guys, you can buy this canvas like this. Buy that because that would be really expensive if you bought that at an um, arts and crafts store. Mm -hmm. So I will buy old canvas and paint over it. This is fantastic. You know, I've seen, just seen this sweet piano. Um, pianos are such an easy thing to paint and make such a big difference. We've had so many people that have lacquered pianos. Um, and basically you just have to do the one step. What? And it works too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now when we talk about painting fabric, you do not, this is, tell us about this fabric, Jane. You know, it's probably a cotton poly blend. It is a low nap, so this would paint really well. Okay, so that way you've got a sofa that you could literally come in. Now, when you're going to be painting fabric, though, like this, not the vinyl, you need to make sure that you thin your one-step paint. You want to thin it down to 15 to 20%, um, and then you are going to sand in between coats, and you do want to do the final um, coat is going to be your wax. Now, this would be another great chair painted, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Again, it's got a very low, uh, low weave. And um, again, probably a cotton poly blend. And yeah, that would be great. A lot of people have vinyl sofas like this and they want to have a lighter color. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you've got white and you want to be able to make it look like brown leather. This is a very, very easy peasy thing to do. Now, we would normally put it in a sprayer. Again, you know, if you're going to do this for any length of time, invest in, in an airless sprayer. They're only about a hundred dollars. Uh, if you really want one that does well, you might spend a hundred and fifty to two hundred dollars. That's something that's going to last you a long time. It's going to take about twenty percent more paint when they're mm -hmm. using it. You mm -hmm. want to remember that. But so, all right. So, you know, when we today we're going to be showing you how to um, create a, cap a Caproni wrap. This would be a fantastic piece for a Caproni wrap. And you might say, why? I mean, because one, it's got simple lines to it. It's really easy to wrap with it. It's a plaster wrap. I would take the hardware off. Mm -hmm. So um, as far as this piece, do you recognize the design of this? What yeah. company? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's look in the top drawer. Let's just see. Does that drawer open up? So you want to look inside. Usually the left-hand side of the drawer will be stamped or it will let you see as far as the manufacturer. This one doesn't look like it. It has one. All right, so as far as telling, let's tell somebody we want to take the hardware off and we want to be able to have new hardware on it. So we just start with a screwdriver and pull those two screws out, pull that out, and you're ready to go. What do we need to fill it with? You know, it's great if you can find hardware that has the same spacing, but if you can't, then you want to use um, wood filler and fill those holes up. So not Bondo? You know, you can use Bondo, the only thing is, uh, Bondo is, it's much more difficult to sand. So if you use Bondo, you've got to sand it before it thoroughly dries so it's a lot easier. Otherwise, it's real difficult to sand. All right, let's keep looking. So I love, I love this piece to be able to do the Caproni wrap on. This is so sad. This has glass on it. Look, it's like, we, we're like squirrel. Jean has to like look at stuff and pick it up. So... For that million he's he's looking for that million dollars now look hey babe let's come over here to this one so a lot of you have china cabinets your existing china cabinets and with the pediment on it let's look and see if we can't oh, yeah. we're gonna go on a little um genuine mahogany so it's mahogany so that that's a good segue what would you, a lot of people are like, don't paint mahogany. Yeah, I used to be like that. <laughs> but you know, it's gotten to be where mahogany like this has just kind of gone out of style. It's dated, isn't it? It's dated. So, you know, something like this, you could 
remove the doors. Yes. Uh, and and just have it open. Yes. And just do open shelving. Just do some nice big glass shelving in there. Um, Actually, I like the doors on this piece, babe, because, and they're open. I think it would be fine, guys, if you haven't done this. You can do um, a stencil design or do some remo removable wallpaper in the back and do a pattern. So I'm just going to tell you, I want to know, what, Gene, what would you do to the piece? And then I'm going to tell him what I would do to the piece. Again, I'd take the doors off, <laughs> put glass shelving. And I'd put lights. I would do lighting inside. Where's the best place to get, like, LED lights for that? You know, there's a lot of... You can go to your local lighting company. We've got several in Memphis uh, that we can go to. Or you can just go on Amazon and order it. But I think that'd be great to have that lighting in there on the glass shelving and shine through that. And then you could put all your... Uh, you know, nice trophies and things like that. So, what pa what would you, what paint would you use, and what color would you do? You know, with that, um, I would probably use uh, a dark gray. Would you? Mm -hmm. Like Good Man. Okay, um, which was named after Jean, by the way. I'm just going to tell you what I would do. I'm going to pull back. I want to be. Able, I want them to be able to see. I would totally do this in Belgian blue lacquer. Oh my gosh, it would be so pretty in Belgian blue lacquer. And I would take the hardware off and probably gild it in gold where it would just kind of pop and set it back. And then I would do a pattern in the back. I think that would look absolutely adorable. All right, so that, or, that kind of gets difficult. Look at this. This is interesting, babe. Look at this. This is a bamboo etagere. Those of you that you may be going, what is an etagere? What's an etagere, babe? You know, it's uh, etagere et used to sit behind me in school. <laughs> oh, Etta. Yeah, I remember her. <laughs> These are fantastic, though, for storage. Yeah. When you've got um, in a child's room or yeah. any room for that matter. Yeah, a lot of places that you go to, they don't, the closet space is limited. Yes. So this. You know, if you've got a, a bathroom that you can put your oh my gosh, this could be so cute. Rags. So as far as painting, this is bamboo. Mm -hmm. This has a factory finish on mm -hmm. top of it. Let's let's walk through. What would you do? Now this would look great. <gasps> it would look great, lacquered. Yes, we're would. I mean, guys, we're not wanting to push you any particular direction, but it's like when we see something and when we're shopping, mm -hmm. we're looking and saying, what product would I use in this? Mm -hmm. This would look fantastic in a white lacquer, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. And then you've got glass shelves, so you could do a pattern on the glass shelves again. You could. You could. That could be a lot of fun. And then you're back. Or you could, I might better have a pattern on the back of it all the way down. Not sure about this, but you know, you think about fabric. it. If you had fabric draped on this so you could close it. Maybe so some linen would yeah. be pretty. Some yeah, you Belgian could. Linen. Belgian linen. See, I've taught him well, haven't I? All right, so, got, hey, babe, look at this over here real quick. So, here's an armoire that maybe a lot of people see a lot of times. And they're thinking it's dark wood. They think it's like mahogany, or is it? No, not mahogany. This is um, this is probably it's either maple or cherry. I think it's I think this is maple, and it just has a cherry finish on it. Which they do that a lot. They'll do maple. And then they'll then they'll just put a cherry finish over it. So a lot of people don't use these as much anymore because it held the television in the top, and people have flat screens, so you don't need that. But this can be perfect for a nursery. It's great to be able to do in a lighter color. Um, babe, talk to us real quick. You know that mahogany piece? That was it, mahogany that we looked at over there. Mm -hmm, that was mahogany. Talk to people real quick about tannins. Yeah, you know the tannins in the wood um, can cause the staining to come back out like so when you paint it now this piece again because of it being maple it has very very light tannins it's very uh very small amount so even the veneers could create a tannin issue a veneer a veneer of like a mahogany uh yes it could so what when so when they're painting guys what can happen it looks like little tiny red dots the paint pulls that through and it's any paint it doesn't matter our paint or any brand of paint 
Well, so what do they do? Base is pulled up. You know, it's good to seal it. You want to seal it not because you have to, but because you don't want to continue painting coat after coat to block the. Uh, so, question: Could they go on and paint and clean it with a clean slate, mm -hmm. and then paint it, mm -hmm. and then if it pops up? Mm -hmm. Then seal it. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's yes. what I always do. You know, if you, uh, you know, we're finding a lot of these homes don't have closets. So this that's true. Be, so this would be great. You could for put storage. A, yes. You could put a dowel rod. Yes. You yes. Know, up in the top. Here but that's why for a baby's homes. room for nursery, yeah, these yeah. are so cute mm -hmm. and very utilitarian. So um, you know, uh, this piece has got some age to it. Jean found some money. You need to give that to the people at the front desk. <laughs> he will. Talk to us about this piece, babe. It's a neat little piece. So it's like this, this goes back to the yeah, 60s. Let's, yeah. Do you see that? Let's show them the dovetailing. Mm -hmm. You got nice dovetailing there. More You've money. got dovetailing on the back of the, mm -hmm. of the drawer. Mm -hmm. I think this is older than the 60s. I think we're probably looking... It's going to be mid 40s. Yeah, 30, 40s. So, um, what wood? Yeah, be on that. It's not You don't maple. think it's maple? No, it's How not How come? Maple. No, it's too streaky. The grain on it's really mm -hmm. pretty. Mm -hmm. Now... I don't know that that's maple. Let's take a guess. That one's pine. This one's pine. Yeah, that's, I don't know. I don't know. Could, could, I don't know. The grain on it. So, so your drawer fronts are a uh, veneer. Yeah. And then your top. The oh, top, no, the top is veneer too. Yeah. So look at this guys. So when we talk about veneer, Babe, talk to us about how do we repair veneer if we're going to be painting it. Go paint it. If the veneer is lifted, what you want to do is lift up the, the, the veneer where it's lifting. Shoot some wood glue in there. With the syringe? Well, if it's on the edge, you can just push it up through the, through the, uh, the opening of the veneer. If it's bubbled up, you can take a very, like a, an X-Acto knife and cut a little slit in it, and then push one end, one half of that bubble down to open that, shoot glue in there, and then then clamp it and put something flat on it and clamp it down. Okay, let's see. I just wanna see if there's anything else in here that we wanna be able to show y'all about. Y'all are in for such a treat today. Um, all the ladies that are going to be doing these amazing projects, you're going to be able to get so much insight. When you come in thrift stores like this, It's you're going to be going, okay, now I know what I can do with this. Can we talk about this piece? Just the last one. This little vanity dresser. Mm -hmm. well, it's got some burl veneer. You can see all of that. Look at the verdigris on the hardware. That's pretty. Mm -hmm. As far as that drop. Mm -hmm. So that's probably, those are, that's brass hardware that's been turned to the verdigree. Yeah, that's nice hardware. That's pretty. Mm. Look at that. Look at this. Look what they, this is what we used to do to our furniture. Look at the, what they put, the trim. Mm -hmm. yeah, the trim gives it that additional support. Look, you can tell that's old because look at the writing in here. Even the back, mm -hmm. see that drawer mm -hmm. as far as, now what kind of wood is this? Mm -hmm. Well, this is oak. So why did they do, tell everybody, why would the sides and the back and the drawer, as far as the, the construction, why would it be oak? Well, you know, oak was durable, and back then oak was not expensive. So they would use oak because that would just hold up better in the long run. It doesn't warp. Um, well, it doesn't warp as easily, and it was a you know, a good hard one. Okay, so when people see rings like this, mm -hmm. when they see scratches and things mm -hmm. like this, what would be your suggestion to it? If they didn't want to paint maybe the top, mm -hmm. but they wanted to be able to paint the base. Well, on the top, then what you want to do is several things. You can use the furniture tonic 
and that will rejuvenate this or you can go all the way to refinishing it. Sand it down. And you just, you can st strip that top, clean it real good, and then use one of our stains and matte sealer. So um, if we were going to sand it down, just not use a stripper, what grit sandpaper would you tell everybody to use? What you wanna do is be careful because when you're sanding the finish off, if this is a veneer, you can sand, sand all through, the, way through the veneer very easily. So that's why I say you may want to just use a stripper to strip it as opposed to sanding because again, the sanding, if you're not careful, you'll sand all right the through, through the veneer <clears throat> and you'll be in that substrate and the substrate's not pretty. So guys, you know, as we look through here and we see all this furniture and all these pieces, it's, it gives you the opportunity to be able to create um, as we say, craft a beautiful life and create the finishes on these pieces. And part of the reason why we're doing this paint-a-thon today is where that way you can learn how to do these finishes yourself and be able to increase kind of your repertoire um, of finishes that you're gonna be doing and executing because you're gonna be learning from some of the best. Well guys, I hope you had fun. Going, Thank you, is this, going it's hot in here. But this is company. It's, you're my company. You're my high company. Um, I hope you guys have had fun going through this thrift store with us and being able to see all the opportunities. But now you're in for a real treat. We've got some amazing projects that these ladies are going to be teaching you how to rescue, restore, and redecorate the pieces that you're going to see in thrift shops like Haven House, like we did today. And remember, Haven House is in... Um, Santa Rosa, Santa Rosa, this, Santa Rosa Beach, Rosa Beach on uh, 30A. So, you know, come out uh, here come out and and frequent their their establishment and know that uh, anything you buy is going for a great cause. Yes, it's fantastic. It helps men in their addiction process. It gives them a place to live for 12, 12 months to eight months, eighteen months. Um, be able to get clean and then a lot of them come and they actually work in here and I love that's a process of a lot of thrift stores mm -hmm. all across the country it's a great way mm -hmm. to be able to help a good cause mm -hmm. and help you to decorate your house in a beautiful way enjoy the paint-a-thon everybody Bye.